A lot of people have asked me to explain Laplace's equation over and over again, so I thought I'd do a video about it. So let me re remind you of the setup. We're interested in a square domain. Could be a rectangle, but let's just for simplicity say a square, maybe 0 to 1 on the x-axis, going 0 to 1 on the y-axis. And we're looking for a function phi of x and y such that delta of phi equals 0, where delta of phi is d2 phi by dx squared plus d2 phi by dy squared. So we're looking for such a function. There are many, many such functions, so we need to put some more constraints. Um, so what we're going to do is specify the values of phi along the boundary. So I'm going to say phi equals f1, which is a function of x, when restricted to this boundary, um, this will be phi of x comma zero. So when y is zero, and it's going to be equal to f two, which is a function of y along zero comma y, and up here it will be f three, and along here it will be f four. So phi of x comma 1 is f3 and x and phi of 1 comma y is f4 of y. Now first of all I've got to be careful to make sure that all of these boundary conditions agree at the corners. In other words f1 of 0 at this corner here should agree with f2 of 0 at this corner. Um, in order for all of these boundary conditions to, to fit together to give a continuous function along the boundary because we certainly want phi to be continuous. Um, we, want, we want it to be twice differentiable in fact. So this should be true. We should also have f 1 at 1 equals f4 at 0 that's this boundary here or this corner here and similarly at the other two corners so those are restrictions on on the kind of functions I can put in <coughs> suppose we have such corner conditions satisfied what we'd really like to do is to solve the equation bit by bit by actually setting most of the boundary conditions equal to zero. So these three, and just letting f1 be non-zero, and then maybe adding on a solution where these three are zero, and maybe f2 is non-zero, and similarly for f3, and similarly for f4. This would be our ideal way of solving this problem, because Certainly, if three of the boundary conditions vanish, it looks a lot easier. And unfortunately, we can't do this because unless all of these functions, f1, f2, f3, and f4, vanish at the corners, we can't just substitute zero here. Otherwise, we'd have a jump at the corner of the functions. So the first step is find a function phi zero such that um, phi zero agrees with this, this solution we're looking for at the corners. And once we've found that, we can take the difference theta minus phi zero, sorry, theta equals phi minus phi zero, and this vanishes at the corners. So once we've done that, the boundary conditions will have changed. So the boundary conditions are the boundary conditions BC's boundary condition are F1 minus phi zero along x comma zero and F2 minus phi zero along uh, 
0 comma y and another two conditions so all of these get reduced by a by 0 restricted to that particular boundary component and then we need to solve four separate problems theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 and when we add them up we're going to get the function theta so because Laplace's equation is linear we can just take solutions and add them and we still get solutions so once we've done this we'll have a theta which satisfies these boundary conditions and we'll have a phi zero and the idea will be to add them so phi will be equal to phi zero plus theta so solve in, in five steps for phi zero and all these theta components So what kind of functions can we use to solve this equation? Well, I'm going to first of all write down some very special solutions called separated solutions. So these are solutions of the form x times y, where x is a function only of little x and y is a function only of little y. And if this is a solution, so if this solves delta of xy equals 0, then just expanding delta as d2 by dx squared plus d2 by dy squared, the d2 by dx squared will only hit this function of x. So we'll get twice that differentiate twice times y, and then the d2 by dy squared will hit the y. So we get x times y prime prime equals 0. And this means if we divide through by xy, we get x prime prime over x equals minus y prime prime over y. This side depends only on x. This side depends only on y. So it's a constant, which we're going to call lambda. Well, these equations should look familiar. These are the harmonic motion equations. Uh, we know how to solve them. Um, they have three different kinds of solution depending on whether lambda is positive, zero, or negative. So let's just take this one. X is either a linear combination of sine px plus cos px if lambda is negative so it's minus p squared or it's ax plus b if lambda is zero or it's a sine sh px plus b cosh px if lambda equals p squared is positive okay and similarly we get um, y to be well Remember, we've got a minus sign in front of this lambda, so we'll get the opposite kind of behavior. So C sine py plus D cosh py, and Cy plus D or C sine py plus D cos py, where again lambda is minus p squared, lambda equals p squared, and lambda equals zero. So these are our separated solutions. Um, so remember the first step in all of this was to find a phi zero which agreed with phi at the corners. And my claim is that all we need for this is to consider solutions with lambda equals zero. So phi zero is going to be of the form phi zero of xy equals ax plus b times cy plus d and we want it to agree with the four values at the corners here, here, here and here and the reason 
that we can do this is because we have four constants. We have A, B, C, D. We want to fit the four values. So phi, zero at zero, zero. And phi, zero at one, zero, zero, one, and one, one. So this will be equal to, say, F1 at 0, etc. So I want to do an example of this, first of all. Uh, let's take the following example. I'm going to specify 1 plus sine pi y along this boundary. So that's F2. And then F3 is going to be e to the x. F4 is going to be e and f1 is going to be x times e minus 1 plus 1. And we can check at this corner, phi, uh, f, f1 of 0 is 1. So the corner value is 1. Here the corner value is e. Here the corner value is e. And here the corner value is 1. Right, because 1 plus sine of pi is just 1. So the four corner values are these. So let's try and find A, B, C, and D in this example. And this should give you an idea how to do it in general. Well, at 0, 0, um, phi of 0, 0 is B times D. And this is supposed to be equal to the corner value, which is 1. And up here, at y equals 1, we have b times c plus d, and this is also equal to 1, um, but this is b times c plus b times d, um, and b times d is 1, so that means b times c has to vanish, and because b, b can't be 0 because when we times it by d we get 1 so that means c equals 0 uh, let's check at 1 comma 0 we get a plus b times d for phi 0 and this is supposed to be equal to e but this is a times d plus b times d which is a times d plus 1 this equation. So um, a times d equals e minus 1. Okay, it's e minus 1. Okay, so this tells us that phi 0 of xy, which is, well, it's a x plus b times cy plus d. The cy vanishes, so we just multiply everything by d. So this is a dx plus bd and we know ad is e minus 1 it's already bad e so this is e minus 1 times x plus bd and bd is equal to 1 okay so what then is the problem we have to solve for theta what are the new boundary conditions? Remember, the new boundary conditions are just these ones reduced by phi zero. So the boundary conditions we have to solve for theta are e to the x minus e minus one times x minus one. And this expression actually agrees with, with phi zero along the bottom, so we get zero as the difference. Here, well, x equals zero along this, this vertical line here. Um, so that means that phi 0 actually equals 1 which agrees with the constant part of this so we just end up with sine pi y and along this other boundary condition we also get 0 ok so the goal of the next video will be to compute what, th what theta is by splitting it up into two problems one of which will deal with this boundary and one of which will deal with this boundary. But we've at least computed phi 0 um, to be equal to this, this linear function of x plus a constant.